guys, Cruel Blonde Wave, I'm Eric. Rick. I'm Calvin. Aaron. And we are here with <laughs> Tales of the Jedi. Uh, kind of like a spiritual successor to such productions like Star Wars, The Clone Wars, of which you can check out all of our reactions that are right here on the channel. Do we have Jedi, Jedi Saiyans? Hmm. No. <laughs> Saiyans? <laughs> Why Saiyans? Tales. Tales. Is... Not those <laughs> Tales that you should have gone with Sonic! <laughs> Is... Is uh, Bad Batch like the spiritual successor to Clone Wars? In a way, yeah. Okay. Though this is going to have, uh, I mean, I would say probably same animation style, and yes, G. Bradley Baker all over that show, mm. but this is going to bring back Ashley Eckstein to Ahsoka, uh, Corey Burton to Dooku. Uh, just, I, characters that I want to see again. This is six episodes. They're very short episodes, and our plan is we're going to watch three in this video, we're going to have short discussions in the middle of the first two, a longer discussion after the third, and then we'll have another video come out with another three episodes. So it's going to be a good Star Wars eating day. Eating? Eating. Why are you really having any food? I don't know. We're using our eyeballs. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we also, uh, <laughs> over at uh, patreon.com slash blindwave, which is a place that people that enjoy what we do can support us, yeah. we generally have a tier that lets you check out the entire reaction with your own footage, of course, off Disney+. Plus. But for the first episode of every series, we always offer that to everybody. Down in the description, you can find the link to the first episode, and you can find the links to episodes two and three as well. I've just been thinking about this all morning. I can't wait. I don't know exactly what to expect. What stories we're gonna see? You two haven't seen even seen the trailer. I don't believe, right? Nope. No, I yeah. knew nothing. Well, nothing. You Damn spoiled it, Eric, me you yesterday. You spoiled them on shit. He Why spoiled don't me you yesterday. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> Is there been a birth? I like the yeah. little horns. I think that's what the crying was. <laughs> Man, animation's so good. Yeah, you, I like it. You remember Clone Wars Season 1? Jesus. I do. <laughs> I'm just glad they put more into Star Wars animation stuff. Some of my favorite things. Well, she looks like her mom. Ahsoka. The Kyner Brothers returned to do the score for this too, huh. Aaron. Interesting <laughs> that. I wonder if... Do the lines on her face oh, grow as she change gets... with age? Yeah. They do, yeah. Huh. Life and death. <gasps> Look at that droid! That's, That's neat! Really cool. It's a roofing droid. I know! But it has like a little like... ADA. Oh. Uh, are you sure she's ready? She looks just like her mom. I like the power walking AD8. <laughs> Man, that looks so much like a Soka walking up like there. With the hood up and stuff. Look at these oh, little Tutuka! These are weird. Yeah. Mm. Tutuka. Off on the hunt? Has it been more than a year already? It has, Gondika. Little trash pandas. Mm. <laughs> they kind of look like pandas. That's what I thought at yeah. first. Like these weird. Yeah, they're. They're, They're like little, corny. You know, both cats are Tukas from Luthal. This could be a Tuka from here, you know? Yeah, I guess. T Takuda. Mm -hmm. I like the pine tree look. It's very pretty. It is. It's like a painting. It is. Yeah. No, this is real, Calvin. Digital painting. Real. They film this. <gasps> it's a squirrel. It's, it's, a, squirrel. it's a red squirrel. It's a real squirrel. Actually, x Science does a great job. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like deer. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Like kangaroo. I thought it was her tongue. They're like kangaroo antelope. <clears throat> I'm thinking meerkat antelope. I feel like I'm they're thinking kangaroo goats. Yes. <laughs> meerkat. Dance. <clears throat> one, only one of us is right. <clears throat> she can probably feel its pain. You must face mm -hmm. death, Ahsoka. Oh. Not fear it. <clears throat> Oh no. Oh, is it right there? Oh man, it's like a saber tooth tiger. Yeah. It's huge. Leave the kill. She's got a gun. Oh no. It's over there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. No. 
forward. I don't know why you were ahead. <laughs> where it would go. Hurry! Hurry! No! Damn! Alright. I'm sneezing! Ah. <laughs> I like to heard a roar back at it. Wow, some of those sounds are exactly the Baby Yoda sounds. Nose. Yeah, I was gonna she's say totally she, she's gonna be. What? <laughs> she riding on top she's of it. She's riding it. That's amazing. No one did the Jedi found her. <laughs> Just pet it. Give him some nails. Things were clean. It's much. I would suspect that baby was a changeling. <laughs> what? Gantiga, how could this be? Jedi. Ahsoka is Jedi. Hmm. Too short. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Janina Gavinkar is from yeah. Battlefront 2, right? Isn't she mm. the the main character from the campaign? Was that isn't her that her name? Name? Yeah. I don't I don't know her name. Yeah, she was Pofti, so she was the mother. Oh, okay, that's really cool. Uh, Iden Versa, that was her name from yeah, Battlefront 2. Yeah, Iden. Okay. I don't know what the actor's name. I've, was let me let me double check before I run with she that. She was also in the league. Yes. Is that what it was? The league. Yes. The league. The league. Yep, that's her. Cool. I like to see characters come back and do new stuff. That's awesome. She played Ahsoka's mother. Wow, what a role. <laughs> All right, uh, we're just gonna have a really quick conversation about this one before we roll over the next one. But I love I I loved its length. I loved its lack of crazy shit happening. It was just. It was what small. do you mean? It was, you know, a child convinced a saber tooth cat sure. not to eat it. Yeah, it's that's crazy. crazy shit. Yes, but you Jeez. know, when we're used to, your <laughs> <laughs> standards are so high. Jeez, that is crazy. <laughs> right. I was just thinking about that. You mean like no lightsaber fights, no explosions? No, I mean, no... It's, you know, like it's this obviously reminds me of the Clone Wars. Clone Wars starts quick, it goes quick, and it paces fast, and it leaves you, and it has to tell you, hey, we're done. Everybody's looking out of the sunset. We're done. Get out of here. You know? Like, there's a, it's a very quick thing. And this got to breathe. Despite its very short length, it's also incredibly quiet and incredibly tranquil and incredibly uh, slow in a good way for me. Just for this one episode. I really enjoyed it. It's just a beautiful planet. Yeah. We get These to see the are... animation and the art style continue to evolve. Just shine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. And the music. These people I mean, are so connected to... You know, nature and their ancestors and their spirituality and everything. I like yeah. seeing the the pre Jedi time, right? Like mm -hmm. even the Obi Wan series talks about him having slight memories and is like, I think I had a brother, you know, stuff like that. And it's like we don't get to know much about Jedi's and their families or yeah. where they came from before becoming Jedi. Typically, sure. a lot of those people are usually end up like. I feel like we know more about like maybe like Ventress but that's she also fell to the dark side sure. and you're like oh when she was older yeah. when she was found but we also like, know about Anakin who also sure. fell to the dark side yeah. he was older when he was found sure and that stuff happens a lot so like getting to see this like I wonder if we'll see like when you know Plo Koon finds Ahsoka or oh whatnot, yeah that's or, what I was that's what I was asking the being is like okay little baby Ahsoka do we get to see Plo Koon sure cause I mean Dave Filoni. <laughs> right? His name is all over the credits. Oh, yeah. I like seeing the like the tra tra 
Torgruta Village. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just getting to like experience different stuff that we don't usually get to yeah. see too often, you know? Sure, me too. Uh, especially, Calvin, like you said, like things being connected. It's They don't have that disconnect between their food and their life, right? Like in, in our more modern world, some people might be like, don't kill the animal, it's, 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 it's dying and stuff. But, you know, like you have to kill it. You have to kill it humanely. I that's like where your food comes from. Like that yeah. is your part of this world. You're not disconnected out of here. You are in sure. there. It you know? feels more tribal. It feels it more like Native Americans and stuff sure. going out and like we kill the buffalo, we use yeah. the buffalo and that yeah, kind of stuff, we, you know. We respect it for what it's giving back to us. Sure. Right? Like the reason she's hunting with a baby, like she starts fussing and stuff, I feel like it's like no, you know, look like They're death. Normalizing. You need to understand death yeah. and mm-hmm. you know It's not, a necessary part of life. Yeah. Not be like, no, no. Mm-hmm. But just because something makes you uncomfortable doesn't mean it's it's wrong or that you should not face it, right? Sure. So, but a, but a, a baby Ahsoka who's still innocent is looking at this thing not as if it's scary or danger, just but just another life, just like you know the mom said, like life is all around us, but so is death. But, sure. So I just life and death. I liked it. I liked the little yeah, like I, I assumed that they were a little Tuka like variants, right? Because there's different Tukas all throughout the galaxy depending on what planet they they uh, are bred on but this definitely seemed more like a dog creature with the uh, I've seen cats bark Anthea. I have seen cats bark <laughs> yeah, you're right. there's that one video of that cat like in the window going bark 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 and then it sees us being filmed it's like meow <laughs> it's great so yeah alright well uh, I say we move on to the next one hmm. sure let's do it I love that ship Look how good he looks. <laughs> oh my god. No, that looks so shh. good. So does that one hear what it's like? Tensions are high enough. Oh, yeah. Yes, master. Okay. I mean, he's young. Yeah, I know. I just want to see, like, how. He didn't always sound like that. He sound. Yeah, yeah, right. He's not always going to be like. Obi-Wan? <laughs> like, Obi-Wan! Look at Baby Qui Gon. Uh-huh. Baby. I just love his lightsaber. <laughs> Is he still a Padawan here? I don't see a braid. Yeah, I know. I think a Dooku's just always worn a cape and everything. Like, he's like, this is what I wear. Gave up being a count for this. Where is the child? Hmm. Where are they holding the senator's son? Hmm. Why should we tell you? You're one of the kidnappers. Maybe he just ran away. Brody looks so cool. They all are. This whole village did because they don't agree with what the senator is doing. The senator used to be a good person, but now so much like Dooku. Justice. Justice. It's so cool to see Dooku as a Jedi. Whoa! Jesus. <laughs> Lifter. The only well kept droid they have is <laughs> guarding the baby. Look at that baby. I thought it was a baby. <laughs> it's got Vegeta armor on. The senator. He's here. And he's brought soldiers. You have deceived us, Master Jedi. No. Our coming here was not known to the senator. Hmm. I love the color of his robes. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Conquistadors. Uh, she turned him in. The dog lady. Let me assure you, your son is in no immediate danger. I'll be the judge of that. God. You need to just have the son come out and be like, "No, they don't have me. I'm here on my own free will." Right. Especially if he's like more of understanding of why they took him. This environment is so cool. It is. They don't want to fight. You serve the Senate. No, no, they don't. We serve the people of this republic. He was a good man once. Show me. I love seeing him with the blue saber, man. Stand down. He even holds it up ready like he does. Like, all right, let's do this. (sighs) 
You don't want to fight Jedi. Oh, the high ground, no! Oh, fuck. Good job, Qui Gon. Music's so good, I like it. So good. To you, Master. Oh, uh, he's tired of this shit. I don't blame him. <laughs> Save your father. What? Go Save now. your father, man. Corruption like yours must be eradicated. No. Stop, Master. It's over. These are your people. Our people. Should have started with that. <laughs> Having the sun go out and talk to him. Maybe. Guess what was that transition? That's good. Letterbox wipe. Is that your favorite transition of Star Wars? Yeah, Star Wars has been having the transitions I will not allow all fucked up to continue. Lately. Your actions saved many lives today. Just thinking in the moment, Master. <laughs> well then, you're a much wiser man than I, Qui-Gon Jinn. Thanks to your teachings. <clears throat> oh, man. I want to watch a hundred of these. I know. There's not <laughs> enough. I don't know why that last part just seemed so good. I don't know. Oh, I believe uh, Michael Richardson that plays Qui-Gon is uh, Liam Neeson's son. Not quite like the voice match, but cool that he's playing a younger version of his I son. I thought it might have been like Kevin Michael Richardson's son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is Josh Keaton related? Any other Keatons? I don't think so. Okay. I know uh, Vanessa maybe. Marshall, though. <laughs> Yeah, the village no, elder. Definitely. Yeah, you know what? Got, what got me about this is that Qui Gon is the one that's like he recognizes, like what Dooku, what Dooku can do, and it reminds me of the part of Episode Two when, when <coughs> Dooku's talking to Obi Wan, he has him up in you know the the binders or whatever, and he he says, "I wish Qui Gon were here. He would know what to do." And I've always looked at that. There's lines in him trying to manipulate Obi Wan, but I bet you there's a good amount of honesty in there. I sure. Think. Like, you're saying, like, Dooku's talking about Qui-Gon, yeah. and, like, he would know what to do, and it's yeah. like, in a way, Qui-Gon helps keep him in check, too, you where know, it's the, like, Qui-Gon helps save the lives of a lot oh, more yeah. people versus, like, what could have happened. We've talked about Dave Filoni's explanation about why the Duel of the Fates is so important, and it denies Anakin a true father figure, right? Qui-Gon was meant to be his father, and instead he gets Obi-Wan, who's more of his brother. Sure. Uh, but I never really thought about it in the, in the sense that Qui-Gon could have been something like that for Dooku as well and when, when he died that starts the process of in 10 years he will the Clone Wars come you know I just wonder if maybe if Qui-Gon were around it wouldn't have happened to Dooku either I mean did you know? Dooku f fall after Qui-Gon yeah. died cause like yeah I could see maybe like in the I don't know in his depression if he had it you know there's that yeah. idea of attachments and whatnot. Sure, and that, shouldn't, that shouldn't be a thing but if you lose your master or your apprentice after having how many years together yeah. of being master and apprentice, more than likely there's going to be some form of attachment that happens from that. And losing that person can yeah. send you in a different route. Especially you know? since, you know, the younglings are taken away from their father figures. Sure, their mother yeah. mother figures. They attach to someone at a young age, especially when they take them so young. Mm -hmm. So then when you get also, though, to Count Dooku here talking about, like, uh, corruption like yours needs to be eradicated. Like, he's looking at, like, this is an evil that is causing all of this pain and suffering. We need to get rid of this. And in a way, I understand like his 
view of like you are not good. That's a republic did, senator. And if we yeah, get rid yeah. of the evil in the republic, it will be better. You know? He's the cancer, yeah. and he's going to be cut out. Yeah. Right? So like, if Dooku, I don't think Dooku. I don't know. I'm not sure. There's there's some books and stuff too, but like if Dooku is. isn't fully aware of exactly what Darth Sidious is wanting to achieve, him believing he's part of the separatist movement for good reasons against a corrupt republic is just another manipulation. Yeah, I mean, even rather the, than using him to be like, we will create an empire and control it all. He may not even be. He he's still just a pawn in the whole game of everything. You know? Sure. They, they say here that Senator Dagonet, like he started out fine. He started out like wanting to be good. But somewhere along the way, he lost it. And I think sure. they're talking about Dooku. I think Dooku, you know, the Jedi say in episode two, like, he's a political idealist, but he's not a murderer. He used to be a Jedi. Like, there's some, there's Sure. He's right about something, or at the very least, like, he believes that he's right. He's not just trying to be the Dark Lord or anything. Yeah. And then he falls yeah. to some corruption. And I stuff. think that Sidious does what he does to everybody, which is, like, he doesn't necessarily have a plan for you, but he has a goal for you, and he'll use you for that goal. He frames he what you want in his in his goal. And right? when he looks at Anakin and says, you know, kill him. Take his life. Do it. <laughs> you know? That moment is Dooku being like, oh shit, I was used just like everybody else. So Sure. I just no. I, I love things like this that can provoke those thoughts. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful animation. I can't believe it. Is. it. It's better than Pixar was ten years ago. You know? Pixar is great now, of course, but no. sure. millions and millions, millions of dollars. Correct. It just pushes, I mean, as technology is gone, it's cheaper to do more stuff typically, oh, yeah. so they can put more into it and get stuff that just looks really good compared to like, well, it's a TV show, you know, like, yeah. we'll put some of this into it, Cartoon Network will run car- some Clone Wars. Yeah, and some of the other productions that we've had out from Disney Plus, it's like, okay, well, that's, it's streaming now, but it could have gone on TV and ran and had commercials and stuff, but this is like... It's as long as it needs to be. It's not any longer. It's not any shorter. They just get to pick their time and sure. do it. And I do like that idea know? of, with with streaming more so, you get to pick, like, how much time do you want to tell yeah. your story? And as long as you have the budget for what you need to do, that's what you do, right? I don't mm-hmm. need to fill 25 minutes if I don't yeah. need to fill 25 minutes. I can do a 10-minute story if I want to or whatever. That's sure. why I like, I like, what, like, visions and this and yeah. things that can kind of fall. Even, like... Stranger Things or whatever, where it's like, let's make them as long as we feel they need to be for the the momentum we want sure. for it, you know? As the animation at Lucasfilm animation got better, so did the resources of Kevin Kiner and his brother being able to have access to an actual orchestra and not like a remixer, you know? Like, in the early Clone Wars, they're kind of synthesizing a lot of that stuff. And every once in a while, they're like, all right, we'll pay to have an orchestra, do a Soka's theme or something. But full orchestrated everything in these. I love it. Yeah, and it's so cool that he also came back to bring that specific Clone Wars flair. Because if you if you if you're listening to it, you can hear those themes in there that were started back uh, when this production group got started. So I just love that he's still there. I really love the planet. Yeah, it was mentioned several times in the mm-hmm. reaction, but it's just so different. And in... I, I was kind of reminded of uh, where Ahsoka will end up. In Mandalorian season two, that kind of like burnt forest planet yeah. a little bit, um, and just the, the kind of like more pine look to the trees reminded me of last episode of this as well. Mm-hmm. So sure, like I'm curious, like what did this place look like? Yeah, a few years ago. Sure, you sure. Know, like like before, when he became senator. Yeah, when they you know, he took care of things and helped the people, and now it's like I'm taking everything I want, and yeah. no one will defy me, and yeah. you know, stuff like that. It's like I wonder what this place used to look like. And I love that if you're a fan of Christopher Lee and remember some of his early stuff, that's what he looked like. He looked that like that. He looked you like, know? Yeah. yeah. So sure. I, it's also cool, too, <laughs> to see, like, just, you know. The his s- teeth are better here. Yeah, they're a little bit better. But the specter. What do you guys think of the younger Dooku voice? Do you guys, did you guys like it, or did it feel it. weird? I, I like that it felt familiar. That's yeah, okay. Like, the cadence feels close. Yeah. But no, I, I, I like that I can clearly recognize Dooku's voice, especially Cor- Corey Burton's version, just because, I mean, you, you have to be able to hear the guy I've heard be the villain for me to believe, like, hey, he has he wasn't always like this. Sure. Like, that's him. And it stems yeah. well with, like, Clone Wars. It does. Like, And I think Corey did a good job in Clone Wars Dooku to oh. try to make it feel like Christopher Lee's Dooku from... Mm-hmm. You know the the movies and stuff. And didn't Christopher Lee do his his own voice in the movie? In the movie, yeah. 
I think he carried that. Java. It's just funny Java. to hear because the lead say Java. I think Corey Burton carried that pretty <laughs> Me well. Too. So him trying to do a younger Dooku. I was like, yeah. I, I hear like a younger Dooku, I think. Yeah, but sure. I, wasn't, I wasn't sure. A couple times I'm like back and forth. It's, with uh, it, I don't think it can be understated how much I bought him as Dooku. And he's up against one of the greatest voices of, our, of, of, the, of the movies that I watch, Christopher <laughs> Lee. Like... I don't think people really think about that much being like that guy competed with him like sure. just to even like come close is crazy <laughs> you know like christopher lee was cast as saruman because saruman in lord of the rings he's, he's meant to have that voice that can it's just his voice that can take you right like don't even let him speak yeah that's that's christopher lee's voice so i love it i love this i love it so much <laughs> i do like I love the and we're watching Andor right now, and I, I love that for completely different reasons. But this one, like, like I'm just seeing stuff I've always I've always wanted to see a Jedi Dooku. Are you kidding yeah. me? Like I I said this in the trailer reaction, but I've literally had a dream about watching a movie like this, and woke up disappointed. Yeah. Uh. Now back during like the the Clone Wars reactions, we got like a little snippet flashback of Yoda. Yeah. And that was like, oh my gosh, I need more yeah. of that. I need, I've need, i needed more of that ever since I saw that episode. Sure. I'm finally getting like a little tiny piece here. A little bit, yeah. I want to see Padawan. No. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, like how far back do you go? Yeah. No, I just, I, I wonder what their history is like, because Qui-Gon didn't seem surprised when this started to happen. He, he kind of felt like, this is, my master does this. And Dooku didn't seem to have an issue pushing him away. You know? Like he knows that Qui-Gon will stop me. Yeah. Or was he pushing him to like, or maybe he was pushing him like, hey, Qui Gon, stop me. Maybe. I don't you know? know? Maybe it's like a hook <laughs> thing where it's like, no, don't try to stop me, Shmi. Don't stop, stop me, Shmi. Stop me, Shmi. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm kind of making a joke, but I wonder if there's something in there where like Dooku recognizes that he's about to break because he realizes I have the power to stop shit like this. Mm. I need my Padawan to stop me, and he pushes him towards the sun as opposed to away from him. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. I wonder if we'll get a little bit more maybe through some of them of understanding maybe what it's like. I was surprised. I thought we were going to get like three episodes and three episodes, but I like that it's like back and forth. Back and forth. We'll see if that continues. All All right. right, Next one. Let's do it. I like that it's coming from space for every episode. You've been studying the tablet for a long time. Are the answers you need over Master Katri's death in that room? Ooh, the beard. No. And Senator Larry's testimony isn't enough for you. Master Katri died from an ambush? My instincts tell me it's not that simple. Since oh. we are not members of the Council, we cannot involve ourselves in local political skirmishes unless hmm. requested by the Jedi High Council. They're not members of the Council? That's interesting. Not yet. My friend. Jedi Knights. Your devotion to rules is sometimes inspiring and sometimes maddening. <laughs> devotion to rules. Inspiring and maddening. This reminds me of the. Oh, no, not anymore. Never mind. It's fall. You would think you wouldn't have those things sticking up on a landing pad to restrict. What kind of ship could land there? Welcome to Raxus Secundus. Raxus? I am Jedi Master Windu, and this is Master Dooku. We are here to see Senator Lara. We saw this place in Bad Batch. Master Katri. She was well respected and will be missed. By the time we arrived, it was too late to save Master Katri. Let us be on our way. Hmm. Senator's voice running is Seth Green. I was going to say, that sounds like Seth Green. It's obvious that he's hiding something. We should take this information back to the council. Would you want Katri to leave without finding out what happened to you? I would want her to follow protocol. <laughs> the one time he goes against protocol, loses his arm. It's a cool ship. True story. Man, it's so pretty. Yeah, look at the leaves. The piles of leaves. Not a bad place to die. Better place to live. Huh? Is there scorch marks? It's like blaster fire marks. There are scorch marks. How many attackers were there, Senator? It happened so fast. I, I couldn't give you an exact number. 
a single blast mark on the ship. If Master Ketri were fired upon here, why are there any blast marks on your ship? No damage? Carbon scoring? Judging from your description, someone fired from the direction of the ship. For a Jedi to succumb to a surprise attack is rare. Unless that attack is from someone one would trust, like you. <laughs> Shit, Dooku. You went very quickly. Dooku, stand down. Justice. The guards killed her. Oh! Oh my god! Gotta kill you now. <laughs> Why did the guards kill her? Oh, who's that? Droids! Oh! Damn, they're everywhere. Oh man, that behind the back block was oh. great. These are two really good duelists. Punch Do the best. Literally. I love it through the, the yeah, through the dust and stuff. Do the fingers. Mm-hmm. You and all of the Senate puppets will feel reckoning. No. Is that his son? Probably. He was selling off our planet. Such a beautiful piece planet, too. By mm -hmm. peace. All from his comfortable residence on faraway Coruscant. Mm. Jedi claim peace, but mostly keep law and order for the rich and powerful. Country was a Jedi. She would have listened. Oh, man. I love that. That gum. I don't condone your methods, but you had every right to protect your planet. Make sure your people don't lose heart and evolve so much. It is the only way you truly have victory. I thought it was over. Right? Do we get to see the council? Peter. Younglings and Jedi who questioned themselves relentlessly. She was of the Force. It flowed with certainty through them. Master Sinu, right? Sinu Bay. Presented with Master Catra's council seats. Uh, I will. I will speak to the council on your behalf. How kind of you, Master Jedi. Mm hmm. <laughs> So, following the Senate is more important than protecting your own, I see. So Qui-Gon, too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we, this is how Mace gets to the, to to the his council. Seat. His huh? council seat, yeah. Master Katri Ka was a previous council seat holder. And yeah. Looks like she was the same species as Luminara as well. Yeah, I, I kind of thought um, so, yeah. Like, it seems like a lot of this, at least the Dooku episodes, is like what does it really mean to be a Jedi? Sure. Right? I like the comparisons to, like, the Jedi and, like, the Republic and the Senate, mm -hmm. right? Like, what are they and what is the ideals of the Jedi? Yeah. Because even in some of the books and stuff, it talks about, like, we are here to be keepers of the peace and we work with the Republic, but we work more for the Republic, not for the Senate, right? So yeah. it's like, it kind of falls in a weird way of, like, it's a religion, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, we are trying to do what we feel is right, but not that we feel it's exactly what the government's wanting us to do. In a way. Yeah, like, yeah. is law and order more important, or is helping people more important? Like yeah, Sometimes sure. those things overlap, but sometimes they don't. Yeah, sure. So what do you choose? Yeah, and when you have someone who's like, well, this is a lawmaker, and look at what they're doing. Like, both of Dooku's have been, here is a senator taking advantage of their position to... The Republic mm -hmm. itself. To reap, yeah. you know, yeah. to get profit from destroying their planet. Like, both of them seem to be doing that, you know? And, and like, it's completely in line with what he was upset by, supposedly, minus the Sith Lord stuff in Episode 2, which is just the Republic doesn't work. It is co filled with corruption. I mean, yeah, what, what they said here is correct. Like, the Jedi are sent on shit that the Republic deems to be important, not necessarily the lower, you know, yeah, class. Although in the first episode with Dooku and Qui-Gon, 
they seem to go there not for the senator of the republic, but like unaware yeah. of the like the senator yeah. wasn't aware of what they were doing. So I like that where it's like, mm-hmm. hey, here's the thing. Why don't you go investigate that and cool. see what's going on there? Mm-hmm. As we know later on, yeah. especially with the war and stuff, they are very close to the they re- are. republic and the senators and what they yeah. do. Rather than being like, I mean, in the uh, in the Brotherhood book, there's like a situation on Cato Nemodia where it's a separatist planet and they go there and Obi-Wan goes there and is investigating but there's a lot of very specific conditions he has to follow because he's a Jedi of the Republic you know but wouldn't it would it have been better if you would have had Jedi on both sides working at, with the Separatists and working with the Republic but not being for one as ambassadors one entity yeah. you know and being there to keep the peace and instead we get them as generals leading the Republic army yeah I wonder if Valorum is currently chancellor, or he's not chancellor yet. I don't really know whenever. Maybe at this point, ran. I don't know. I don't know how long he ran either. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Duke is still. I mean, he looks older, but sure, yeah, he didn't look. He doesn't have white hair. Just right? got a council seat as well. Yeah. I don't know how necessarily how long he had been there, but I don't know. How, what would you put Duku at this time? Forties. Age? Yeah. He's really always looked old. He always did. Sure, yeah. <laughs> he definitely has but it's hard to like placing him here versus like how old is Dooku in like episode two. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. You know, I don't I don't know. Yeah. And yeah, this is uh the planet from the Bad Batch, uh Raxus. Is that the one where like it was a separatist planet and yeah. they had to go in, get that one guy out? Mm-hmm. Um, I believe it's where Parliament was. Is that right? Is Raxus where the separatist parliament was? You know Lux Bentari's yeah, mother? Yeah, Lux Bentari was talking about it and stuff. Was that on Praxis? Let me check. Like, that would have been their separatist capital, right? Was it Raxus that was their separatist capital? I remember that episode, but I yeah. don't remember what capital it was. Capital of the Confederacy. Yeah, you're right mm. with that. And then it was the capital of yeah. the whole separatist movement. Which I guess makes sense because you're seeing... I mean, honestly, if yeah, Dooku has a, a part sense, in man. that, he's talking with a guard who is yeah. going against the Senate because they are abusing what they want in the ideology. Yeah. So they want to separate from the Republic. This is kind of the seed yeah. of that. Like, you see, like, Dooku kind of being, like, against some of the Senate and Republic yeah. evil treachery. And as more as he sees it, and yeah. where the Jedi are falling in line and what their ideals fall to, even if Darth Sidious didn't really manipulate everything, yeah. I could still see Dooku, like, falling into the separatist side of oh, things yeah. and being like, no, I can see him doing this regardless things. of any influence yeah. from the outside. Right? Sure. Yeah. And honestly... He's, he's already giving the, uh, Samaj, the the commander of the guard, the guard or whatever, Yeah, like he's giving him advice. He's like, no, just evolve. Change how you do things, Yeah, but keep doing it. Because right? like they made a separatist, like a confederacy senate, right? They had a group of people that were like, we will be this group trying to help oh, yeah. the separatists and the confederacy. I mean, George Lucas did that on, very much on purpose. He's like, yeah, and when I made the prequels, the good guys were the bad guys, and the bad guys were the good guys. <laughs> in sure. a way, right? Sure. Because it's like the Emperor uses everybody as a tool, Dooku, the Jedi, but also common people that aren't military. But he stirs them up, and he makes them the confederacy. I mean, that's part of his plan. Sure. And once the Empire is all under his control, he's like, well, okay, rebel stuff's not a big deal, but... That's one of his greatest weaknesses is that he doesn't see that those people can make a difference too. Yeah. And yeah, they're going to yeah. rise back up. Saul Guerrero, those characters are going to rise back up and ultimately be part of the, the movement that takes him down. Yeah, the prequels don't do a great job of humanizing the Separatists. It doesn't, like, no. No. But Clone Wars does much better. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And I think it's why, like, I think having some of these different types of stories here that branch off for individual character things, right? Like, that's more about, like, here's what you see with Obi-Wan and Anakin and that kind of stuff. You're not seeing a lot of the Separatist side of things because you're following these characters, and they're not really involved in those plots specifically. But if you get a chance to go and see, like, with Clone Wars and where Ahsoka went with Lux Bentari and what Count Dooku sees, like, it kind of gives you a better understanding of why Count Dooku's on his side. Because it really could... If there was no Darth Sidious... The idea that I was saying about of having Jedi on both sides of it, trying to keep the peace and not have a war, Dooku probably would have gone to the Separatists as like yeah. a Jedi helping them versus being a Sith Lord. And I think that Lucas had, he definitely had ideas and he had lines in there, to, you know, to show you like, you know, the the easiest one to say is there are heroes on both sides in the opening crawl of Episode Three. Sure. But he also, I think that he kind of purposely makes them like, well, you know, their soldiers are mechanical, so we don't sympathize with them. And then their leaders are all aliens that we can't really sympathize. Yes, 
But then when Padme starts to realize, hey, there is something really, really screwed up with the way Palpatine is doing things, Anakin looks at her, the person he loves the most, and says, you're starting to sound like a separatist. You know, like there's, I think there, like he kind of purposely like hides the idea that like, the idea of rebellion and, and being a separatist isn't in itself the bad thing. It's that it's being used for as a tool to get to, to be both sides of the chessboard that Palpatine is playing against himself, you know? And uh, sure. I, I, I kind of like how subtle it is, but also there are some people that don't. <laughs> so, well, like, like sure. Antifa. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I mean, just look at like the problems in running a country and getting everyone to understand and be on the same side of uh-huh. things. And then now put that on a galactic scale with multiple planets that are really far away from each other. That are, and that, and some it's so planets, hard to understand each other. Yeah. And some know? planets that people just don't even go to or know anything about or care about. You yeah. know? Like sometimes like some of these planets, like Coruscant doesn't even, people there don't go or care about what this other planet's doing. Mm-hmm. It's just, well, it's part of the Republic. They get a seat too and they talk and then we'll blow. Yeah. But, I don't know. It's just, it's got to be a hard thing to kind of do and these, the separatist group is like, hey, we are being not treated equally and people, senators are using us to get money. Yeah, you know, there's corruption in the Senate. And we need yeah. to fix that. And like Dooku talks about, like the council being like has fallen, right? They're being corrupted, mm-hmm. you know, by the dark side and stuff. And while he's right about like Sidious is doing this stuff and clouding them, also they may have been getting too close to the Republic versus maybe where they were, you know, hundred, two hundred years be- even before that. I mean, you know? Mace Windu being all procedure and by the book, he's not thinking. Right, is what oh, yeah. Dooku's saying. He's yeah. following someone else's rules, yeah. so he leaves he he himself of any of any wrongdoing. Yeah, no, I really liked that. I liked. I also liked Mace's characterization in the sense that he doesn't want to kill these people, but as soon as he, he gives you a chance, and then as soon as you fire back, he puts it right in your heart. Yeah, he's like, I gave you a chance. <laughs> yeah. That's what he did to Explain Django. Explain yourself. And yeah, with jumped, grabbed a yeah. gun. He let them do it too. Once Django comes into the the Petrani arena. Jango, or Mace just like fuck it, cuts his head off. You know, he's a very by the book Jedi. But I just I, I love that we can kind of in Dooku's way he's thinking we can kind of hear like Qui Gon a little bit being like yeah, you know what they're not that great. Well, even in the, like the last episode with him, like Qui Gon's like you know just thinking in the moment. You know, like yeah, it's yeah. just like that's Dooku here was thinking in the moment. He wasn't thinking about like well let's go back and in the future we'll come back and deal with this or whatever. He's like right now we are here. Let's deal with this here. Something feels off. Let's look at what this is. Yeah. yeah. Would you have wanted the Master Katri to Master Katri to leave and, and report your death yeah. or investigate and find out what happened? Yeah. Do you leave more time for them to cover stuff up or anything? Sure. Was there or a to shot... manufacture some other spot that they could have said, Oh yeah, this is where the ambush happened. Was yeah. there a shot where they like went up high and you could see like a gun or a droid there? Because I thought there was something. Weird. There was a droid. There was something other than leaves there, but I, I couldn't tell. I what was it like, was. "Is that a gun or a camera? What was yeah. that?" And then all the droids showed up, and I was like, "I think yeah. that." The first time it showed that shot. The second time, I don't think there was anything there. Really? Because they did the same shot twice. Did they? Okay. But the first time, I thought I saw a droid. They looked like uh, the HK droids that we got in Mandalorian season two a little bit. Like mm-hmm. not quite the hunter killer droids that we're familiar with from Nice World Republic. Yeah, but like that's newer it's design. been hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. Well, there were the. Clone Wars ones in the farm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, man, His family. Yeah, I want to thank this show for giving me Master Mundi in the hood. <laughs> the <Conan>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's such a big hood. <laughs> it's like Marge Simpson. <laughs> it kind of is. It's, it's great. Fun. Who were those people next to uh, Mace? People the, next to Mace. The yeah. girl and the woman. Like, they looked like they were Valerian. <laughs> Valerian. Yeah, yeah. I get you. <laughs> like they had the no, white, I, I they had the white hair them. and stuff, and I'm like. Are those other Jedi? I'm yeah, like, in the funeral. is it relatives of Mace? Is sure. it, you know, I'm like, who are these people here? Like, there's, it, an, there's an issue tip Jedi in the back there. I'm not, you know, with the, the double, like, cone things on Because, like, I was wanting to look of, like, oh, man, I wonder who's on the council right now. But, like, I don't know yeah. who those people are. And, like, they could be council members, but that person looks real young. Yeah. I doubt they're a council member. So I And the design is so, like... Gone are the days of like, hey, you know the bad guy from Last Arc? Well, he's a background character now because we don't have many models. Like, sure, they everybody is made with intention. It looks like, but those character designs, I'm like, yeah, yeah. it makes you automatically think, man, are they going to be in season two? I don't well, yeah. think I want to see their tails. Have those characters if they had to move? Yeah, I don't think they would do the hair like that. Yeah, you don't, I don't think know. so? You don't think we'd see them again? I, I think they like can afford it. I feel like they're made so like they're so interesting looking of characters that. 
I want to see them in somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? I just wonder who they are. But yeah, in the in the one shot too, it was Master Sanube and then what's the the library lady? Right? Jocasta Nu. That's who that other yeah. one was, right? It was it was those two. And I was like, oh, cool. Who looked like, yeah. Who I think she used to be on the council and then what, had since retired. Sure. Yeah. If it's not in the if it's not in the it does not exist. exist. It does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, yeah, the hood on Master Mundi. Is, now I need like a custom action figure. A custom. Never action. seen that before. I didn't know if he had, like, a hole, you know? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes, like, when Yoda puts a hood up, they have little holes for his ears, you know? I didn't sure. know if he'd have, like, a cone head hole or not. I guess. Turns yeah. out he doesn't. No. Like, Ahsoka, she has the, you know, the custom-made hood, too, right? For her. And then this issue tip in the background as well, he has one. But All right, that's been three so far. There's still more to watch, so yes. let's jump into it. Guys, thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this, but we still have more Star Wars Tales of the Jedi to do. Three more. So make sure you subscribe for when that video comes out, or maybe out now. It might be. So go check it out right now, and uh, make sure you guys join us for Badonka Gonk Podcast. Badonka Gonk. Yes. Uh, at twitch.tv slash Yeah. See you next time.